Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here for the uh, the March 26, 2024 Building Committee for the Horticultural Building. I'm not going to take a whole lot of time. I think we have a lighter event this afternoon. I think most of you know who each person is at this point. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Helen and, and to Craig to kind of go through the package that uh, Deb has prepared for us. I think overall you're going to see some positive news that has come out recently in the last, the last several hours. Uh, Specifically, the 75% estimate from CD. I think continues to be in line, but yeah, I don't want to steal the thunder from Alan. Uh, we'll talk about that. There's a few other topics that we do have to address. Uh, there's one agenda item this evening at the board meeting that we, the trustees to vote on officially. We'll talk about it this afternoon. Uh, and again, overall, I think we're in a, a much better place than we've been at least in the beginning part of the process. And I want to thank all of you for your input. Obviously, thank Alan for the leadership throughout this whole process. So, Helen, Helen, please. Sure. Um, so, thunder stolen. Um, <laughs> the good news is that we are uh, pretty much tracking, even with our DD estimate, um, understanding that we also did roll in the um, radiant floor heat to throughout the building. Um, so we, I just wrote down at DD the uh, estimated construction cost, and this is we literally did get the estimate yesterday. We're still vetting it. I don't see any huge issues that will move the needle too much uh, one way or the other. But at DD we were at five million nine forty-five two thirty-nine. Uh, the summary sheet you have in front of you is is indicating five million nine hundred thirty-one three hundred forty-three. So pretty much that even even with rolling in the radiant floor. So that when you say we're pulling it in, it's not simply the plumbing in the slab like they had it previously. This is the whole right. system. Right, the system throughout the building. Yes. And this also includes uh, some of the stipulations right. for the EEA grants that you requested. Exactly, yes. Uh, some of the wood products that were uh, requested by the CR and EEA. So that has been included as well. Um, we, had, we only had a couple of alternates we asked our estimator for information on relative to the um, finishing of the uh, wood plan for the exterior of the building, which we need to evaluate a bit more. Um, but otherwise, um, we feel like we're pretty, pretty good about this estimate, which we call that the 75% uh, construction documents phase. So um, that is good news. Um, Craig can walk us through the overall uh, budget and how this number plugs in. Um, the, other, uh, the other element that's um, worked with the district on is not the district school. Um, it's because you are your own district, right? Okay. Tim, Andy, and others was the development of um, what we need to do by um, mass general law and public procurement uh, laws relative to proprietary procurement. Um, we need to um, as a matter of course, um, list three equivalent products, and then in situations where um, the awarding authority doesn't feel that makes sense for them, uh, a proprietary vote of the controlling body, in this case, the Board of Trustees, needs to be taken to say, we understand and here are the good reasons why we want to solely specify a product or a system. So. Um, in your packet is uh, a letter outlining uh, sort, of, sort of the rules and regulations associated with that, as well as a full list, uh, six items that um, pretty much are ones that um, fit into um, your campus-wide system. So for instance, the door hardware, um, I'll skip the windows for a second, uh, the security system, HVAC controls and fire alarm system are all um, systems, brands, uh, particular manufacturers that are established on campus and make sense to continue to um, tie into those. And then there are two on here that um, you know come from, I would say, one, um, the grant requirements through DCR, EA, um, that is the wood fiber insulation. Uh, that one, um, was a specific request and a uh, requirement grant to use this timber HP wood fiber. I think Tom had mentioned a meeting or two ago. There are other competitors out there, but they are in Austria, <laughs> not as local as Maine. So um, for the purposes of the grant, uh, obviously 
first preference is Massachusetts, but regional works just, just as well. And then the other item is the exterior windows. Um, again, this is related to meeting the specialized code requirements. Um, this is a uh, window that we feel meets budget, but also all of the uh, new energy code requirements that, um, that make more sense for this project. So it's um, those six items that um, will be requested of the Board of Trustees for a vote. I have a clarification. Alternative number one on your front budget, the 27, the, uh, sorry, alternative number two, the pre-prime siding, that is something that is going to be harder to find from a Massachusetts mill. Okay. If it was field primed and free field painted, that is far more likely to be available. Okay. Well, uh, that's good pre primed implies finger joint. It's usually from a mega mill in Canada or the southeast. Okay. Um, I also was hoping to hear um, as the the radiant heat has been proposed for the slab, can you guide me to where the previous heating system is a deduction because we're no longer doing that. And so wh where is that economization based on, on the schedule here? Uh, within the estimate, uh, I don't think I can answer that question. I mean, in terms of uh, trade-offs with uh, yeah. components that may have been involved, yep. uh, I would have to get back to you. Can you further elaborate, John? Certainly. So um, I can appreciate that there's some uh, air conditioning desire for the building. Makes sense. Offices in particular. Potentially the, uh, the uh, simulator room is generating heat. Uh, and so is there a more economical way to approach that, perhaps by um, doing mini splits for air conditioning, designed for air conditioning for those particular rooms? Um, I also think that there's some merit to designing the building for future mini split uh, expansion, just putting uh, uh, portals to the walls, sleeves, so that uh, should the school wish to do a whole building BC, it could. But ultimately, if the heat for the building, which is the primary conditioning for the building, is coming from the slab, it feels like the air source heat pump uh, uh, ductwork and condensers and the uh, electrical upgrades are economizations that can be witnessed in other places, notably in the uh, surviving building. Yeah, are there some trade-offs, Helen, right, in regards to now get the radiant heat source. Mm -hmm. I imagine you still need some of this uh, HVAC uh, units to place and duct work for um, air exchange, I mean codes. Um, but uh, I think uh, John's got a valid point. Is there possible savings? I think we're looking at the another layer that I think would resonate well with EEA is there's a lot of desire for nature-based solutions. That's a catchy phrase. Um, and I think it's merited. And uh, I remember as a kid, if the house is hot, I was encouraged to open the windows. To just be able to demonstrate that the building has an airflow capacity. It's going to have humongous doors on one side to ensure that the windows on the far side, the east side, are also able to open to just create a, a pathway for airflow. Yep, whether it means the interior doors have louvers on them or, or uh, the default is open or something like that to ensure that the nature-based solutions for cooling the building are available. Uh, I think that would please the EA folks that are undoubtedly reviewing the design. Uh, question for clarification. Remind me what EEA stands for. Sure. Uh, it's EOEA. It's Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs. That is the umbrella organization for DEP. Uh, DOER, DCR, so all of the agencies that govern uh, our practices. Ultimately, the, the funds that were gifted to the school came from the EPA. Thank you. follow up on can you, can you tell me, forgive me, I'm, I'm bothering you again. Um, what is the roofing material? 
intended for? Do we have a, a firma? Is it a metal roof or a uh, shingle roof? Okay. Um, is there, have we talked to solar uh, installers to learn whether there's a preferred shingle or a preferred underlayment that we could design for now that would reduce the cost of solar later? Well, certainly the roof is designed structurally to accept uh, PV. It's, it's a requirement of, yep. of the stretch code, of the um, specialized stretch code. Uh, to be solar ready, we have started some outreach um, through the city uh, to see if there are any recommended PPA providers in the region that we should be speaking to um, to provide a roof plan. Person who's, I can yeah, chime in. Um, so Carol Collins is the director of CAPA, um, which me as chief procurement officer am now part of. So we have an arrangement, the city has an arrangement with Fifth and Adam, Adam Solar, a vendor, and um, we're excited about a potential low or no cost solution once the building is complete to install, to work with them to install an array. They do a PPA. Yeah, yeah, PPA, yeah, yeah. Yep. Excellent. So it sounds like we have that arrangement at a few places. Uh, the senior center is one, and then uh, I think three of the elementary schools. Okay. And so we kind of duplicate that same type of arrangement, and it would be a no, I was told no cost. I was just told I could say that today. Um, <laughs> the, question, yeah. the question Carol had was just if the estimated completion date of construction is still July 25, is that? June. That's our hope, June 25. Okay. But the, the array, if, if there is a desire for an array, could be put as soon as the roof is finished. It doesn't need the sinks to be functional. So, like substantial completion, so potential. Exterior completion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, because, and that's important because the smart program may change. It yeah. may change favorably or it may not. Uh, but being mindful of different tranches within the smart, there's some expediency that would be preferred. Um, I think it's also worth um, being mindful in the design phase to see if there's a chase built in to carry the power to from the roof to the main breaker panel to just ensure that that's built in so it doesn't have to get built later. I believe there's also the ability to do exterior mount. Yep. Given some other projects, yep. given the space constraints in some of those rooms, that is probably the better way to go, but yes, I'm just yep. being mindful. So okay, for, or space in the, the utility space for the panel. If there's anything I can do to facilitate that conversation, whether it's with Finn and Adams, just making sure the roof is constructed in such a manner that could accept these solar panels, then I'm happy one, to help with that. One thing I've seen before that I think has a lot of educational merit is to buy a flat screen TV and to send it to a website that is a dashboard for the production of the roof array. Mm -hmm. And so it can show real time oh, progress. Cool. I think it's really virtuous. Mm -hmm. And you can also link that to the Smith website. So you can click on that to see just how much progress and potential and achievement that particular array has, has demonstrated. I like that. Like it. Yeah, it's pretty short money. I mean, yeah. to have a dashboard is, is not expensive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, question. Will um, mentioned the senior center and three elementary schools. Yeah. Have they been already installed or in the process? Forward? They're already installed. So we're in the midst of, like, I think it's a six year lease at the end of that six year term. It's like already paid off, and then the city starts generating electricity with those solar panels and saving money. So, and what's, what's the life on panels these days? You lose half a percent per year. Yeah. A bigger uh, expectation is warrantying the inverter because the inverter generally has a seven to ten year lifespan, half or a third of the panels the themselves. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Is, are the schools buying the power off the roof through the PPA and at the end of the six years, like, the deal has been satisfied? Correct, yeah. So at the end of the six years, the city owns the solar panels and all the electricity Okay, excellent. Who's the providers again? Fifton Adams. Um, they're a local provider. Um, okay. Yeah. I don't think we got that far with the information from Carol yeah. before she left. So I couldn't remember if she replied on that email. Okay. I told, I told her I'd ask you that question, so yeah, I'll, I'll let her. With the roof plan, yeah. So okay. I'll let her know June 25, and uh, okay. if if there's a chance to start the solar installment before construction is 100% complete, we should talk about that. They can certainly put it in queue with uh, ISO, which wouldn't be important because it's often a six-month lag. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's so it's solar. That's something that's going on the roof. The roof has to be designed to support solar. Right. 
decision has to be made. But I think that is the ultimate goal. I, I think it's, yeah. a, it's a no, in my opinion, if it's no cost and on seventh year, yeah. it provides all the optics and free power, it seems like a no brainer. It's not in the package currently be after the fact. Right. But the conversation is going to be active so we can move right forward with it, hopefully. To help me understand the alternates, it's okay if we move on from solar. Um, what uh, is the siding at this point? Uh, Eastern White Pine Hardwood. Hardwood, is it like a ship or a we're closely with Sean and helping getting specific language and lots of recommendations uh, for sources. Is there, is the DHP installation going to be a continuous installation operator inside? Yes. Yeah. I'm just so curious. What the installation I'm curious whether, because I wouldn't think that we would need it in proprietary spec for the timber HP. If it was just a cavity installation, we would just use the cellulose for a cavity installation. Right, but the specific request that we was for that product by DCR. So I think if we own by DCR, because I would think that if we were. DCR, yes. Yeah. I don't know, but I would imagine that if we were just doing a cavity installation, that cellulose would be locally available cheaper, easier. If we're doing a continuous insulation board, then definitely we should go with the different HP. So depending on the system we're using. It perhaps could be a combination too. It could be a continuous and then the void to loan. Sure, there there should be cavity insulation no matter what. Yep. Cellulose is cellulose. I mean conventional cellulose is common generally with fire retardant. Um, but I think that Sean was seeking a, a it would find a good So is base bid for the wooden siding to be unfinished? Right now, yes, that's the number that's reflected here. So that doesn't feel like the aesthetic that the school has, right? I mean, the right. other buildings are red, right? Right. And so unfinished must be finished. And so what would the painting cost of that to, to apples to apples? Feel like 50 grand is kind of what it's going to cost. Or, you, or, or this building goes it alone and has a different aesthetic, has a different feel, right? All right, I'm now confused. <laughs> so, part of the 1.2 million from the state, yeah, I get that part, is this particular size. Yep. Yeah, I get that part. Yep. So, this wood is going to have a natural look currently in our, say, it went out to bid. And we move forward, right now it's going to be natural wood. And then these wood, this would put a clear finish on it, the first alternate. Right. And then the other one would be potentially red to make it look like the yes. rest of the campus. Um, well, the second one, to be clear, is pre-prime siding. It's not what the state is asking for. But yeah, it's, you, a, it's you, a painting. Just clarify that earlier, yep. I think. Right, Helen? And, and um, you know, we're getting this money from the state and we've agreed to play ball, essentially, to garner these funds. So I think it's important we continue to play ball as best we can. The state wants the material, but I'm not sure that they care to paint it. Yeah, I That's heard. correct. And so this comes back to the main position. A third option would be a solid body stain. That's what I would do for sure. Um, Good thought, Tom. So it's no. a, yeah, solid yeah. red. It would it would blend in. The maintenance is minimal. Is minimal and easy when you need to do right. it. So yeah. and there's yeah, it's probably more money to come. So that's why, like you said, we want to put it all. Yep. You said solid. Solid, solid colored yeah. stain. Yeah, it sucks into the material. It's not so much a surface like a, a paint. Yeah. It's not going to peel. Yeah, there's okay. no yeah. future yeah. scraping. Yeah. yeah, we could do it on all six sides before it goes out. Yeah. 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 Y
So while you guys are on siding, can the school supply the white pine? We're actually thinking about that. Uh, Sean Mahoney was going to talk to him about that to see if you could do that from your forest. I talked to him last week about it. So that was on my agenda to bring up. Sorry. Oh, quick second. Uh, so in trying to outline this 1.2 million and some of the stipulations, uh, Sean threw out an idea uh, that we hire a professional harvester. We do a demonstration at the demonstration course to harvest several of our trees uh, and then mill them, dry them, and then use them for the building project. <coughs> Along with that, there were some other stipulations as far as uh, national award programs that we submit to. Uh, there was going to be some tours for professionals afterwards. Uh, there was if we uh, harvest excess lumber, that we use that lumber within our carpentry or carpet making programs. If there's excess lumber beyond that, uh, the state would acquire that free of charge to use elsewhere. Um, and all of that is under the jurisdiction of the, of the GC that would be hired. This is a conversation I need to have with the board tonight. Uh, I think this is a, a huge undertaking at the demonstration course. Out of respect for the timeline that we have, and out of respect for the GC who hasn't been hired yet, to say, oh, by the way, you also have to oversee this particular project. I was rebuffed. So I did ask the question uh, to the EA, asking, I need, I can't make a decision within my own lane. I have to share this with the board this evening. What happens if the board says this is too much too soon? Do we lose the line? I need to have that that question answered. And uh, the question was answered. We would not lose the line. Uh, what would happen was, uh, in Sean's calculations and his recommendations were, my question was the cost of hiring a professional to come in. Where is that money coming from? Uh, he projected that uh, that would have to come out of our budget, but there would be a cost savings on the back end since we're supplying our own lumber. So it would be almost at a wash. If we don't do the professional harvest, uh, then we're simply buying the lumber. Talking internally, my recommendation to the board tonight, and I'll, I'll share with all of you and we can debate it. Uh, keep in mind, uh, and let you sort of reference it might be more likely to come in. There's a second phase of this project at some point, someday, hopefully, okay, uh, which is to continue the expansion of the building to include the additional classroom, the head house, and the green house. Uh, that is the ultimate goal. Uh, I think I shared with this committee and talking to Sean. Uh, there might be an opportunity to apply a conservation restriction on the demonstration force to prevent us from selling it off to, to a developer. We can maintain the use of the, of the, of the property that way. And there would be a, a monetary transaction uh, to, to provide that, uh, that restriction. Could that monetary transaction be used to then complete this project? I think that's a possibility. And having that conversation, knowing that maybe a second phase, I would be all open to the idea of doing the demonstration harvest at that point for that phase. Uh, so that's where I'm at right now. I'd like to see the, the general contractor stay out of the harvesting part of it. Uh, I think that we probably could get some equipment company to come in as, as a demonstration. And to uh, whether it's John Deere Komatsu or Timber Pro or somebody like that to come in and get some of the fellows that are licensed timber harvesters that are familiar with the equipment in the state to harvest down a couple of trees, process them down, and then we can take them to the mills locally and we can get them sawed up. And I don't think that needs to come through the through the any of the money from the building. I, I support Lenny in that. Um, that said, the, the notion of like stump to to wall is is a romantic and I think a value added, um, but it we're we're estranged from it in our society. But it's not that hard. People do it every day, and so I think we're we're talking about probably a dozen trees tops, and the concern about hiring a, a professional harvester is offset by saying, would you like to cut two dozen trees? And we just do it nothing, and they would go sounds good. 
So I, I think it's unlikely that it would be a cost burden. There would be a logistical, and foresters who might oversee it would work for a percent of the basal. And so again, a no cost. So it wouldn't be, I think, particularly difficult, especially if the DCR was motivated to make that happen, because they're the ones who uh, permit it, oversee it, and, and facilitate it. So if we said, it sounds good, but it can't delay anything, I think Sean would make it happen. That's Folks, my sense. But project goes out to bid on Tuesday. This all has to be known. We can't put a bid of a project out and say, maybe the lumber is going to be provided to you, maybe not. Can we continue this conversation for phase two? I love the idea. I think it's fantastic. If only DCR and EEA were involved in the fall when we were trying to talk to them. This what, is very late in the game. What we if, don't know what to bid. What if, if it was if bid for by the siding? Like, do it all. Go to the, the, the put up the don't siding. Don't you have to dry the lumber? You forest it? Yep. You Cut That's it, not a big dry it. It's What's a couple weeks. Timeline? So so it all could be done by the timeline necessary. But I would say what if it was bid as if you're procuring it? Make it just like like it is. Okay. But and then the change order Right, and then the change order could be an economization, so I'm proposing. That, that and so let's that so that's a motivation for the board. Agreed. Okay. And Helen's got a great point. We gotta get this out to bid. We can continue the conversation. Absolutely. Go down the change order route, work out our details. Put, put it out to bed. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I was Absolute. asking yeah. more specifically for the interior of the shop space. You have like four foot tall walls and yep. the ship lab. Yep. That's a smaller volume that students can easily get out of our woods guaranteed in the next month and have maybe an alumni slice when we pay someone. We wouldn't need to include that in the bid. You could go out to bid. We got some local sawmills that, that would be more than happy to donate their time and equipment to, to mill it out. We got it. And we have a dry kiln as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. We've got to get it out to bid. All these are great ideas. We've got to create a laundry list of these ideas. And once we get somebody hired, get the conversation going. Yep. Yeah. But so the GC doesn't line. have to worry about the harvesting part no. of it or I, procuring it. I think get the bid and then talk change orders. If there are conversations, I think they may be virtuous. All right. Would it, can we do all that, but just look at me and James and say, we need X amount of board feet of lumber out of there and leave it to us to get it done? Because we have past grads that do logging that would probably be willing to come in and help us do demonstrations. We have a father that's willing to come in and do a demonstration. So we'll just go ahead and start working on that. But and I think and if it doesn't know. get used, we'll yeah. just sell the yeah. lumber. Right. Logs. Right. I mean, we can start that now so we, yes. yeah. as a total separate part. But if we could work with you on that to get an equipment company that would be, to, be great. to bring this equipment in, this mechanized logging equipment, so that the students that are here now can, can touch it and feel it and see actually what's being done. Yeah. So if we take a day to do that, I think it would be great for the school, great publicity thing for too. Yes. So while you're moving forward, we can move forward with that. Uh, sure. It's a totally separate thing. Yeah. 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 It's up to your boss. Oh, I know. That's why. I'm yeah, I think we have to talk about it. He wears two hats. Of course, it works. And it's a good thing. So he just took everything. And everything that comes down the pipe. And the guy that gets whipped and beaten and kicked. <laughs> Where's Joe tonight? <laughs> He's out there on the phone. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's move. So to continue on with what Helen was talking about with the budget, um, it puts our total project budget in good health, um, as we discussed last month, with the 1.2 million coming from the EA, um, we have a budget that's still fairly balanced. Um, and again, depending on if we take an alternate or not, that may change slightly. But All right, I'm sorry. I had a question before you get rolling there, Craig. Looking at these professional fees, um, there's no money allotted to commissioning. The field is such a simplified system in this building. Nothing's really overcomplicated. We should need commissioning, and we're going to be at the mercy of the MEP contractors that everything's going to be up to snuff. We did talk about commissioning. First, whether it was required by the city, which it's not. However, it is a good practice. Um, we will probably, and this is something I want to talk about in the specifications, have a 
more enhanced startup and turnover from the MEPs that will have a, a much robust, more robust spec. So it won't be just your standard testing and balancing and turnover. There'll be a commissioning component to that. But we won't have a commissioning agent on from start, which would have been already in play if we, if we followed the model. So we will okay. do a, a level of commissioning. All right. Thank you. All right. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, Sorry. No, no, no. That's okay. Um, so uh, as I said, from last month to this month, we very much stay in the same realm where we're at a balanced budget. We have just enough money to complete the project based on the current estimate. We may have some extra money to work with, pending a, a, a favorite of favorable bid. At that point, we'll have some discussions. But right now, um, I feel like we have a responsible number to move forward with. Um, this project includes the soft cost, the budget soft cost contingency. Right now, we're holding 5%. Um, and we have um, the typical insurances, uh, advertising and printing, and other consultant fees that we've either paid for or will pay for going forward. Um, All right, what, hold on. Why is the builder's risk in this analysis? Should that be carried in the GC bid? It can be done both ways. Um, so if you is do it identified it, clearly in the bid documents? It will be, yes. Double up. We save the markup to a point, and um, typically the builder's risk policies from the GCs can be a little slanted towards the GC. So buying a policy directly from your pilot, your agent, may be more advantageous. And that's that something I threw away. The city yeah. will. Yeah, yeah. So do you? Do you I, I don't know the thresholds. Do you, uh, the, sorry, no. about this approach? I mean, we should definitely have a, it's, I'm, I'm almost 100% sure we need a builder's risk policy. Well, yes, I agree with that. Right, right. Um, so I think I should consult with Maya. There are, there are insurers, the city, it's the Mass Interlocal Insurance Association. Most municipalities in the state are a member of theirs. Anyway, yeah, they're pretty helpful, so I'm happy to kind of summarize what we need. Okay. I'm very confident <clears throat> saying that this building cost exceeds all the thresholds that would require a builder's risk policy. So I can work with Craig and Helen to make sure that we get a okay. quote at least. I could get a firm price if that would be helpful along with that. So First the one I had done an earlier evaluation and got the quote. Uh, uh, basically an order of magnitude quote, so ten thousand dollars came from that okay. exercise. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, to talk about the schedule in a little more detail, as Helen mentioned, we're fast and furious trying to get this on the street. So um, we are tonight getting hopefully approval of the 75% CD set that um, is available. 100% um, CDs will be ready by April 2nd. And those are your bidding documents, basically. Bidding will take place with filed sub-bids as well as the prime GC between April 3rd and May 13th. And the bid very close and, and this might have to adjust slightly but right now we're assuming uh, the next board of trustees meeting on May 14th would be when you approve the bid for the project contract award would then take place shortly after that 15th um, and then construction on the ground boots on the ground would be starting June 20th questions on the schedule Um, last time we reported that we did pre-qualify or were in the process of pre-qualifying GCs for this project. In the first round we did qualify DA Sullivan and Western Builders. The third was disqualified for uh, scoring and um, submission uh, items that were missing. So we decided to put it back out to bid, or sorry, back out to the statement of qualifications. Those are now due tomorrow. We're expecting two at this point in time. We've been given verification we will be submitting. So we, will, we have the potential of having four pre-qualified bidders at the end of this. Can you share the names of those two potentials? I cannot until they've submitted. Okay. Fair enough. On the timeline, do you have, on here you say, 
construction begins June 20th, but I hear you say it begins May 20th. Well, you sign a contract on May 15th, you've got submittals, you've got permitting. It, it's at least 30 days before you start construction. Okay, I was just going with what you have on this one. Uh, the design master schedule? Yeah. yeah. Kick off May 20th. <coughs> Kick off. Um, the meeting that is required and can happen and would be prior to construction, but actually boots on the ground is different. And you when we're mobilizing. Later than 30 days. Yeah. Okay. Is there any concern that this would trigger MEPA or it's not financially tall enough? It's not the acreage one trigger. Okay. There's no Okay. What was your correct? Question, John? Well, this would trigger MEPA, which is a much deeper dive. <coughs> Massachusetts Environmental Policy Act review. I guess we should also say we did successfully have the site plan review last year. Is that last Thursday? We made it through our city groups. Can you clarify? I'm going back now. Uh, so, if the bid is going, is going to be there's going to be a price attached shortly going out to bid. Are the bidders going to be bidding on a complete air source heat pump system for the building? And doesn't that feel like redundancy and extra cost? Why are we bidding? Why are we asking for that to be no, bid? Have, I don't think we have time to change it, John. Okay, well that'd be a change order itself. We have to create our laundry list of all these things we've got to work out. Okay. But we need to get it out to bid with a contractor on board. Yes, we're not going to get dollar for dollar, unfortunately, in a change order. Yep. But uh, that's the cards we're being dealt with. Okay. Not no, I don't think that we should delay any. Have the mechanicals been fully designed at this stage? Can we see them? Sure. I'm happy to share the, yeah, the, the documents are more developed than what the estimators estimate. Jim, take a look at them. So not only did we obviously get over the hurdle of the planning board, uh, about a week ago the city the mayor presented to the city council the capital improvement projects for the city. Uh, we can't get into the details, it's nothing official, but there is positive news that we put together the project as well. So uh, Specifically talking about generator and service channel. Which won't be necessary. Yeah. Right. Maybe they can reappropriate those funds if, if unnecessary. Okay. That's it. All right. Phase two, there's room for us. Yeah. Okay, tight. okay, yes, good. Just so wanted to make sure that that was like a possible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's also the corner. I mean, it's, it's come up with the plumbing design, you know,
those those words aren't our, in our vocabulary anymore. So much phase two is going to happen. Thank you. Awesome. Right, Andy. I think we're, um, we all know a lot more now about potential sources. Yeah. No, this is great. Uh, thank you, everybody that uh, participated. Now, in terms of future meetings, I think we still need to view this committee to work out this one request in terms of changes, potential changes down the road. Anybody got any thoughts? I think it's a good idea. In particular, I'd like the design to go to the solar folks so that it can begin their process because it can take them a while. They just need to know the orientation, the slope, and the scale. And I think that would really be a lovely ice on the cake to have solar on the roof as soon as possible, in any sense. Um, <coughs> get into the weeds a bit here, but uh, filed subbidding starts 4 3. Do you think your addendum? For filed subdivisions would go out for ten, something like a week after that. Yeah, we really so, need to outline the micro schedule. So if Jim has some, something really catches his yeah. eye, uh, April tenth, and then yeah, a week later, so like four thirty one ish for for overall GC. I would think. Can you say that again? So so yes. finish mechanical go to sub by 431. So they're going to put the whole package out to their pre-qualified GCs. Their GC is going to uh, send it out to, uh, no, these are filed sub -bidders. sorry. Uh, so <laughs> so sub are going to get the uh, documents. They're going to put in uh, questions, first of all, if they have any, and we will re we'll release uh, <laughs> A, an addendum which will answer their questions so that everybody has the same information. If there were a change, if Jim said, hey, I want five weeks, not three, yep. that would be the time that we would also say we want five, not three, or none. Yep. Because the number Whatever. is still not. And so then, okay. so that's about, so I think the the filed subdates are looking at drawings for about two weeks. So that means they get their questions answered in one week and then they have another week to incorporate that into their final number which they're delivering yeah. on 422. So we will meet again before that happens? No. Our next meeting penciled in for May 14th. Not the April. The other op, I mean, if you want a meeting in April, or to meet on April 9th. We should have a meeting. I, I hope we should have a meeting. This train rolling. Yep, chef, yep. Thank you, Mr. Robert. Okay. It's fine. What's the date? April 9th. April 9th. Great clock. Wondering, is it possible to get the 75 percent again now? Sure. Sure. That way, if I really see something glaring with me and my engineer or whatever, I'd rather bring it up now than maybe okay. gives us that week or 10 days to see something that we have to tweak it. I will All just right. uh, ask that anyone who receives that link keep the link to themselves, uh, not sharing it with any public or <laughs> How are we going to handle getting this link to Mr. Moran? I'm going to send it to Andy, and Andy will send it to Dr. Andy may have it, actually. Uh, there's a link to a folder. <coughs> yep. I'll pull it out, and I'll share it with you. There's no access right to it, right? I share that link. Correct. Yeah, anyway. I guess, please fun along questions to Andy or comments. What do you think Oliver Smith would think now, 1844? <laughs> I think he thinks things are expensive. <laughs> <laughs> as you look at a, a sticker on a car and what you purchased, when my father was a Hudson dealer, he used to talk about the cost of automobiles. He'd say, if you say it fast, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. 
I'll try that next time. Yes. Yeah, it was a number? number? No, I let you two. Yeah. Okay, you're he's, the expert. He's the wood utilization forester. Okay, for the way more about this than yeah. I do. Yep. That's why we brought you on board. Oh, yeah. thank you. See, I did something right. Yeah. For what it's worth, there was a conference this past week at UMass Amherst at the Over Building, which is the CLT building. And yeah, uh, why didn't you tell me you were there? I worked over there. I was speaking. Go on. And I was at, supposed to be there. No, no, at the conference. You were? Yeah. All right. All right. Anyway, they, they were really dragging. Uh, <laughs> Carol.